Tim from Holistic here. This is just a quick crash course on using Adobe Photoshop. As part of what we do, we have to optimize images and there's a whole ton of steps associated with optimizing images. And I just want to show some of the main features of Photoshop that make this process a little bit easier. What I'm going to be showing is Photoshop Elements 11. So what I'm going to do is load it. When you load it, you can, you're uh, presented with this dialog and that's the photo editor there. Let's let that load. Let's move that into the window. So this is what you're faced with. The first thing, uh, usually when it first loads, uh, it'll be in that mode and that's what it will look like. What you want to do is you want to go straight to the expert mode. The expert mode really just shows you more tools. That's all it really does. It's got guided on there, but I tend to find that is not so helpful. What is helpful is if you want to know how to do anything, do a search, a Google search, on what you want to do. So for example, if you wanted to crop a picture and didn't know how to do it, then you want to search on Photoshop Elements 11, crop picture, and usually there's a video by somebody showing you how to do just about anything. Anyway, I'm going to show you the main features here and the main things to do associated with optimizing images. Now one of the cool things is if you want to get going on editing an image, it's pretty easy. You just find the image you want to edit and literally all you've got to do is just drag it and stick it in the box and there it is. So that kind of makes it really easy to start going. One of the first things you might notice about that image though I've picked is that, let's pull it up again, is that it's actually quite big. It's almost 2 meg. In most cases these an image that size is way way too big to upload to a website. Really what you want, ima what you want images to be is somewhere in this sort of range, 200-300k at most and when they're down at this size that's great but it basically just means that the image is much bigger than anybody's ever going to be able to see on the web. So one of the first things to do is to change the image size and to do that all you do is you go to image resize image resize and you get a dialog box and what this is doing is this is showing you pixels and you need to play around with this to get used to it but in essence all you do is you pick the size you want. You probably want to constrain the proportions, keep that checked. Usually somewhere between a thousand pixels to 1200 pixels is more than big enough. That's a big image for a website. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to 1200 which is probably a bit bigger than we need. You want to play around with that and see how that actually comes out on your computer. And it's going to vary that these dimensions, the pixels, isn't the only thing that controls the size because there's the resolution of the image as well. So a, one, uh, a 1200 pixel wide image at 300 dpi is going to be different to a 1200 pixel wide image at 200 uh, dpi and so on. So the, image, the size is always going to vary. Anyway, let's do that and just see what that looks like. So it kind of shrinks it down. This size that it's showing on here has nothing to do with the actual picture side size. It's just shrunk it down relative because when it brought it in, it filled the screen and now it shrunk it down proportionally. So to see it and work on it, you just change the view and you just zoom in, which is just basically control plus. That's all I'm doing to get back there. It was so high resolution to start with that even when I expand it out again, it still uh, looks good. Now the next thing is what you're going to want to do is now save it and you can save it in whatever format. So let's say for example you have a PNG image but you want a JPEG, then you do that when you save the image. So what I'm going to do now is I'm now going to say save as and I'm going to decide where I want to put it and I'm just going to put it in a temporary folder. So I'm just going to navigate to a temporary folder and I'm just going to call this image test1 just to see what that looks like and it's going to be JPEG. So I'm going to save that. Oh, I'm going to call it, uh, let's call it Photoshop test. I'm going to call it Photoshop test 01. There we go. I'm just going to copy that so I can add that again in a minute. So save. You get a secondary dialog box, box and you can pay, play around with these things to change it so you can reduce the quality and that will change the size and you can try these. Generally speaking, leave it large and leave it like that would be the obvious thing to do. Click OK. Now what we'll do is we'll go look at that resulting file and see what that looks like and see how big it is. So there's my file. So what we did was reduced it from uh, the original file, which was 
1,898,000, that's what that is, that's 1.8 megabytes, that's another way of saying it, almost 2 megabytes, and we've got it down to 877 K, 877,000 or 0.8 of a megabyte. So it's quite a bit smaller, but it's still a bit big for most images that we want to upload. So we can play around with it a little bit more. So let's do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to change it again. Image, resize, and let's take it down to 1,000. Oops, yeah, 1,000 pixels. And we'll say OK to that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say save as. And again, choose JPEG. I'm going to have it in the um, temporary folder. And we'll call that number two. So Photoshop test image number two. Save. Again, um, I can reduce, the, reduce it here a little bit, reduce the quality, take it down a little bit to 10, and say OK. Now, what you have to do there is going to vary on the image because it's going to be dependent on the in original image that you're working on. Now this is a very high quality, very large image that I'm starting with to show the process, but you don't always have to reduce that quality in that second step. So let's go look at our second image. And there we go now, down to 300K. So our original source image is 1.8 meg, and we're now down to 300K, and that's perfect for the web. So let's have a look and see what, how good a quality image that is. What's it gonna look like on the web? So there you go. That's what it's going to look like on somebody's computer screen. So it still looks really nice and high quality. So you've got to do that. You've got to look at it and you've got to make a change and think, well, is it starting to get blurry? What's the quality look like? And just play around with it. But you can see the process there that this image looks very good. It's high quality, more than high quality enough for the web. I can even make it bigger and it still looks pretty good as an image. Once I get too big, though, it'll start to get a little bit blurry as I zoom in, as you can see, it's starting to get a bit blurry. But this is way bigger than the computer screen, so it doesn't matter. That's an easy thing to do and probably the most important thing to do. Other kind of functions that you can do, you can crop an image. So let's say, for example, you want to make this just of the boat and you want to cut out all of the surround for whatever reason. So all I'm going to do is move it like that move it like that and then click this and I've cropped it and then I can save it. So crop and resize, very easy to do. Now let's bring it back up and make it a little bit bigger. So there's my image that I'm working on right now. Now other things you can do is to change what the image looks like. So you can change things like if you go to enhance, you can try auto. So it's, sometimes this works really well. If you've got an image that's maybe a bit too bright or a bit too dark, sometimes you can just click on this and see what it does and that sort of increase the contrast a bit, which is nice. If I don't like that, I can just undo that change. And the way I do that is revert, or I can just say Control Z. Maybe I want to change the coloring a little bit. So again, I can go to Enhance. I can adjust the lighting. So that's brightness and contrast. Do that manually, adjust the color, give it a slightly, if it's kind of a weird color tone, I can change it. So for example, Adjust hue saturation, that's always a good one. And I can just go in and I can dy dynamically see what happens. So I can make it a little bit more to the red, a little bit more to the green, a little bit more to the blue. And it kind of gives it quite a different look, as you can see when you do these things. So if I now like this last image, what I can do is I can now say, save as select the format that I want to save it in and we're going to do another JPEG, we're going to make this 03 and we'll leave that as it was, OK now let's have a look at number 3 and there's our final image, so it's actually pretty good so you can see the difference there between the original and that one now that can look much better on a web page because it's just the colors are enhanced, the contrast is increased, I've emphasized the blue. So you can, you know, I'm not saying that you should make those changes, I'm just showing you how to make changes should you want to enhance the look of an image. So there's another feature I want to show you that is incredibly useful to know how to use, and it is this one here, it's this little tool here called the Clone, Clone Stamp Tool. 
uh, this can be incredibly useful. Let me show you an example of how to do that. So I'm going to bring in another image. Now this is an image I worked on. As you can see, the source image isn't particularly good. So I did a number of things to play around with improving the look of the image, taking out this kind of overexposure and color scheme. But the thing I want to show you is, and you just use the color enhance tools and play around with it until you get a result that you want. But the thing I want to show you is this. Sometimes you get an image with something on it that you don't want and you want to get rid of it. So how do you do that? So this, let's say there's some text down here and I want to get rid of it. Or there could be, I don't know, an unsightly thing sticking out somewhere and you want to get rid of that. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to zoom in uh, using Control Plus to do that. And get in a bit closer to this. There we go, I'm getting a bit closer now. Now I'm going to select the clone tool. And what I'm going to do is I can change, see this circle, I can change the size of it, make it bigger so I can do a larger amount at one time, or I can make it smaller. And I can change whether the edge is hard or fuzzy by selecting different ones here. So the first thing I need to do is anchor the clone stamp tool. And the way I do that is I hold down my Alt key and click somewhere where it looks like what I want to actually be here is there. So I'm going to pick that spot there and I'm just going to click. So it's Alt click. I'm going to change it to a kind of size that I want. Now when I hold the mouse down and go over it, it's going to take the, the point there where I clicked and it's going to apply it here. And as you can see, this is what it's going to do. So I can kind of click and I can go over it like this. And all I'm doing is clicking now and it's you can see just over here when I click, it shows where it's taking the color from. And it's gone and it's perfect. And I could play around, I could take a bit of color from somewhere else and put it in. But when you get something sort of vague in the background like that, this process is particularly easy. So let's zoom out and see what that looks like on the picture as a whole. You'd never know that was there, and you wouldn't know that sort of blurring wasn't just part of the C. So we've got rid of our extra bit of text there, and we can now save it. Awesome tool. So I'm going to get rid of that one. So I'm going to just close, because I'm not going to save it this time. I want to show you a couple of the other tools now. So I'll close that. Do I want to save it? No. Another way to use Photoshop is on illustrations, and there's some awesome tools for doing that. Now when you get illustrations, and these images here, these are the sort of things I mean by illustrations. When they come in as JPEG, when it shows white, that white background is actually white. And let me show you the effect of that. So I'm, all I'm going to do is I'm going to drag that and put it on my canvas. And what I'm using now is PowerPoint just to show the effect of the image, what the image looks like. So let's make that a bit smaller. And you can see what I've got is I've got the image but it's on a white background. And what I might want to do is I might want to have this background as transparent so that the only thing that shows up is the drawing and it's not in a square, but I want to change the background color, for example, or I want to overlay it over some text or something like that. So what I have to do is I have to change this image so that the background is transparent rather than white. Now, this is a really good thing to learn how to do. Uh, so all I'm going to do now is I'm going to take that same image and I'm going to put it into Photoshop and there's my image and what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to get my eraser and make sure that it's set like this and I'm going to click here and you can see this dotted area is now transparent that's what that that's what that checker pattern looks like so I want it to be transparent but what I'm noticing here is this section isn't and it kind of doesn't, it won't look right if it's on a page because this part will be white. So I want that in a bit done and I want that bit done. So it makes the phone look like it's on a different background when I do that. So all I've got to do now is I've got to save it, save as, but I'm going to save it this time and it has to be saved as a PNG in order for the transparent function to work. PNG and we'll put that in our temporary folder. And we'll call us call us on the phone. Well, it can be called that. That's fine. And we'll save that. And just yeah, just say none of that, and just say okay. It'll take a second to save it. Uh, now let's bring let's take a look at that image. So here's our saved image. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to PowerPoint so you can see 
what it looks like on a background when I bring that one in. And all I'm going to do now is drag it in and stick it on the canvas. And let's shrink it down and you can see the difference. Now you can see the difference between a JPEG with a white background and a JPEG with a transparent background, how different that looks. Now you can use, there's other tools that are closely related to this that are helpful to know how to use. So for example, I might decide I want the phone to be a particular color. So what I can do is I can go to my color picker here and I get this dialog box. If I know what the color number is, so uh, for example, if I want a specific color, I can just enter the color number in there. Or let's say, for example, I want, I want it to be a green phone. I can sort of drag this here to the color green I want it to be, say OK. Now that means the color, when I place it somewhere, is going to be that color. And there's a number of ways of applying that. I can draw it on, I can paint it on, or I can just use this little bucket fill. And wherever I click, as you will see, I've now got a green phone. Now you can get this problem. And the way you solve that is by, if you need to solve that, you would zoom in all the way. And what you can do zoom in really close. Now it's a bit of work to do this part if you feel that you need to do this. Um, then what you can do sometimes is you can just sort of very carefully fill it in that way or you can do it manually by picking paintbrush. Make sure that you've picked the paintbrush tool there. All these things make subtle differences. You have to play around with them to get used to them. But you can see what it looks like when we zoom in and I can now paint in that area so by being very careful, as you can see, you can work around it. But that part of the process can be quite difficult to get right. So let's go back. Now, let's go back to this level and redo the green. But I'm going to change some of the settings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick my bucket again. And what I'm going to do is change the tolerance. And see if we can get a better effect when we paint it in. So I'm going to change change it to uh, 101, that'd be all right. Now what I'm going to do is put it in and see what effect that has. Now as you can see, I don't have those white bits. So it's the tolerance, it's how accurate it makes the edges is affected by that. So this is the trick and the, where some people struggle is these settings down here can make a big difference to what it looks like. But as you can see, if I get the setting right, then this actual process of creating a green phone uh, becomes very easy to do. So I've now got my image on a transparent background and I have a green phone. And let's say, um, I don't know, somewhat randomly, let's have a yellow dial area here. So I'm not going to make this yellow. Uh, so that's pretty good. So I've added a nice little bit of color. Let's say, for example, if I wanted to really make a point of emphasizing this phone. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save being sure to save it as save as and we're going to call that 02 and save and let's take a look at that new image when I bring it in there it is there let's bring it in over my PowerPoint here's my PowerPoint where's my image gone there it is we'll drag that one in and we'll see what this one looks like so you can see there's the resulting effect on all these different images and different ways you can manipulate these illustrations. Now knowing those tools is incredibly handy to do when you want to create something interesting. Obviously you can add some text to it and do all kinds of fancy things. I always use PowerPoint to uh, add text to an image and save it that way because I find PowerPoint works very well from a text editing point of view. But you can still add text if you want to using Photoshop. And you literally just pick your text tool there, click somewhere on the image and type your text and you can move it around and place it. So I'm okay with that one now. I want to decide where I want to move it. I can make it bigger and it's okay. The text is somewhat primitive compared to what you can do in PowerPoint but it's a good way to add some text if you want to and move it around and get it just as you want and you double click on it like that if you want to edit it. What we're now doing to optimize images is adding EXIF data. The way you add that is super simple. You just go to file file information and this is all just scroll right over to here this is all your EXIF data so all of these different settings 
Often when you fill this first one in, some of the others are partially filled in, so you automatically for you. So you want to uh, start with this one and fill this in and give it a star rating. And uh, Typically a copyright notice would just be, if it belongs to a particular website, you'd put the URL of the website or the website uh, contact page in the area there. And you'd say here, all rights reserved, and then you'd put the URL down there. Pick one or two keywords and describe the image and give the image a good keyword optimized title. So pretty simple. And you can go through the rest of the fields and just fill in what you think makes sense to fill in. There's no exact rule for that. Although it is a very good idea to add, if you're trying to optimize it for a location, to add the address, which is here, add the address of the location that you want to optimize it for, city, state, and so on. And if there's contact information, you know, put the client's phone number in there is a good thing to do. But then you just save it and then you've got all your EXIF data added automatically. Piece of cake. So there you go. There's a few tips in using some of the basic functions of Photoshop. There's tons more that you can do with Photoshop. You can do just about anything that you can think of in Photoshop to modify or edit an image. I encourage you to play around with it. It's quite fun. Just knowing those few things should help accelerate the way you can make effective use of the application.